All right, and we are back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. And for the final part of the show, we are going to talk about the Atlanta Falcons. We're going to talk about owner Arthur Blank talking about the Falcons' quarterback position, just what he had to say on it. Because I, if you remember, you go back to the draft and you saw you know, the, the general manager of the Falcons talking to Arthur Blank, and it looked like Arthur Blank was like, what are we doing? Why did we just do that? But, um... I guess it, that really wasn't the case. I mean, I, I guess, um, you know, things are fine. But this is what he said recently. He said, thank heavens. Now, this is via the Athletic Journal Constitution. He said, thank heavens we don't always listen to the league. And thank heavens we don't always listen to the media. We don't always do what everybody else thinks. We should be doing, everyone else thinks we should be doing. We're actually very independent thinkers. He said, Kirk Cousins is our franchise quarterback. Is our franchise quarterback, is our starting quarterback, and he seems to be doing great from a medical standpoint. His attitude, his leadership, culturally, personally, with our players, with the coaching staff, has been nothing short of outstanding, so we couldn't be happier with that situation. We've been through a situation post-Matt Ryan when we're seeing that movie when we didn't have a franchise quarterback. We didn't want to repeat that again. I mean, I certainly didn't. I'm super sensitive to all forms of succession planning, after 60-odd years of business, in any business, that's critical. At the key position, the quarterback position in the NFL, that's very important. So just listen to our coaching staff and our personnel department. They really made the decision. Michael was going to be available at number eight. They saw an extraordinary talent. I know age does creep up. I could speak myself personally on that a little bit. I know what that means. Kirk will be 36 at the start of the season. We hope and pray he's got three or three to four great years in front of him, maybe beyond that, who knows. But we also know that at some point, there will be a point that we'll need to transition. We want to make sure we do that smoothly. So we're doing our advanced planning and doing our advanced thinking. That's what fans expect us to do. Maybe not right at the moment. At the moment, they may have liked a different player. But at some point down the road, they'll want to know that we can have a smooth transition at that very critical position for the Falcons in the National Football League. So, again, I mean, that's, that's what the front office has said, too. You know, it's, you know, you want to be able to plan for the future, but also, you know, plan for the present. And, you know, I know when we talked about Kirk Cousins and, you know, they, the media asked him, hey, if you, if, the, if you knew prior to signing with the Falcons that they were going to take a quarterback, would you have signed with them? And he said, oh, I don't deal with hypotheticals. Well, yeah, he probably would have went to a different team. You know, he kind of got blindsided a little bit. And you had people saying... You know, they felt bad for him, but you also had people saying, well, he got that big contract, so, you know, you shouldn't really feel bad for him, which I get. Um, I think it's just where the Falcons drafted Michael Penix. That's really, I think, where all of the, um, the outcry came from. Because you're bringing in Kirk Cousins now because you want to win now. But then with your first pick, you're drafting someone that isn't going to help Kirk Cousins. That's really where that all came from. Now, I understand why the Falcons made the pick. And you know what? Michael Penix Jr. probably wasn't going to be available the next time they would have picked. Somebody else would have taken him. Maybe the Raiders would have taken him. So the Falcons jumped on the opportunity. They're like, let's get our guy right here. Let's do it. Now, that pick could, you know, make or break, you know, the front office's jobs. Like, people could lose jobs, depending on how this goes. Also, depending on how Kirk Cousins plays. So, you know, it definitely was a bold move. It was an interesting move. It was one of the more interesting moves of the entire draft because nobody really expected that. Everybody was expecting him to take, you know, an edge rusher. But... You know, that didn't happen. At least with their first pick. Um, but yeah, Arthur Blank seems to be on board with what they did. And I, I guess, you know, maybe he was heated about the pick. And maybe the front office explained like, hey, listen, we want to get, you know, we want to have our future planned as well. Because, you know, Kirk Cousins, you know, he's got maybe, you know, a couple good years left if he does bounce back from his Achilles injury. So you want to be able to have your bat you want to be able to have your future in place. So then like Arthur Blank says, you have that smooth transition 
to Michael Penix once Kirk Cousins' contract is up or whatever happens. Because Kirk Cousins, you know, maybe his contract, he doesn't play out his entire contract and Michael Penix already takes over. Which would be bad. I mean, I, I think if you're the Falcons, you want Kirk Cousins to play out this entire contract, play really well, and then, you know, Michael Penix takes over. I don't think it's going to be like that. I don't think it's going to be this smooth transition. I think there might be a, uh, there might be some bumps along the way. And I don't, I don't think there's really, I don't think it's going to be that smooth of a transition because I, I think there's a possibility that, yeah, Michael Penix could take over when Kirk Cousins' contract isn't even up. So, I mean, ideally, that's what the Falcons are hoping for, that he plays out this four-year contract and everything goes well, and, you know, maybe they get a Super Bowl out of it, which I don't think they will, but, you know, everything goes great, and then Michael Penix takes over. It's not going to happen. In a perfect, it's, it, we don't live in a perfect world. You know, it, it's not going to happen. But, I get, look, I think we all get what the Falcons were trying to do. It just might have not have been the way we all would have probably have done it. But what do we know? You know, what do I know? I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a general manager. That job is hard. That job is very hard. Like, you know, as a Yankee fan, you, got, you know, fans of them constantly, you know, bashing our GM. Which, you know, there, there, it is deserved to an extent, but, and I understand where they're coming from, but it, it's, would you be able to do the job? It's hard. You gotta you have people, you know, go out and scout players, and you got, you know, you got the draft, free agency. It's a lot. After watching Hard Knocks, uh, with the Giants, yeah, I mean, it's it's a stressful job. Why would you want that? But yeah, it's easy because you look at it like, oh, they should get this player, they should get this player, they should get this player. Yeah, well, then you gotta have backup plans. You know, and what if those players that you like they don't turn out to be good? Then you don't have then you don't have a job. I mean, again, it depends, but yeah, like if you if you draft the wrong players constantly, yeah, you, you're not gonna have a job for that that long. So th this pick, this Michael Penix pick, and you know signing Kirk Cousins, I mean, this is gonna determine you know if this front office continues to have a job. Or jobs, you know. Um, but um, yeah, I, I mean, we'll see how it goes. I mean, I expect the Falcons to be a good team this year. You know, they got a lot of talent on offense, and you know, they're hoping that Kirk Cousins kind of unlocks some of that talent. You know, from a Kyle Pitts, from Drake London, we see more from Bijan Robinson, and they added a couple of other receivers as well. Now, I do think it's a step below the Vikings' offense. I mean, you're not going to have Justin Jefferson, who's the best receiver in the NFL. You know, I mean, I mean, I don't, what's Drake London's ceiling? You know, I think he could be a good player, but is he, is he a Justin Jefferson-type player? No, I don't think so. But I think he could be... I, I, he's got talent. You know, let's see how he does when you got... Kirk Cousins now throwing him the football. You know, Kyle Pitts, same thing. Now he plays the tight end. You know, they're lining him up as a receiver as well. Um, you know, let's see how Kyle Pitts is for Kirk Cousins. These guys will benefit from Kirk Cousins being the quarterback. He's just got to be healthy. So, but yeah, I mean, they play in a weak division. So, you know, they have a very good chance to win this division and make the playoffs. But I don't, you know, I don't see this team going very, going far in the playoffs. Because Kirk Cousins, look, puts up good regular season stats, but he gets to the postseason, he doesn't, he, you know, he's won a playoff game, but doesn't really do much in the postseason. So I don't know. I mean, we'll see what happens. But yeah, it's just, I mean, where do the Falcons rank in the NFC? You know, with Kirk Cousins, I mean, I think they're outside the top five. You know, um, I like, you know, the two NFC North teams, the Packers and the Lions, better than the Niners, the Eagles. 
the cow. I mean, I'd probably put the, Fal the the Cowboys over them. Yeah, it's just. And then you got the other teams in your division too. You know, I mean, the Buccaneers got to give them credit. They won the division last year. They're gonna still be there. You know, are the Saints gonna you know come out on fire like you know towards the end of the year with Derek Carr playing well? We'll see. You know, and I actually watched the video on the uh, on the Saints just how you know things have changed since Drew Brees and Sean Payton left. I mean, they got a lot of aging players on their team. You know, it's just, you know, what kind of season are they going to have? Some people, I think, expect, oh, I know there was someone that had the Saints, like, being one of the worst teams in the NFL. But they're just, they're, they're a team that's just, they're mediocre. Um, if, I mean, if Derek Carr plays like he did towards the end of the year, you know, the Saints, they, uh, you know, they got a, they got a chance for this division. But we'll see. So, but yeah, let me know what you guys think, though, about uh, the Falcons. You know, I know we talked about the Saints briefly, but uh, about the Falcons, um, you know, how, how did you feel about the Michael Penix pick? Uh, what did you, what are your thoughts on what, the, what Arthur Blank had to say? Like I said, right here, their decisions to give Kirk Cousins that contract and draft Michael Penix, that's really, they, they got to hope that it works out because they are not going to have a job if it doesn't. So, but I mean, I expect the Falcons to be good this year. But yeah, um, don't forget tonight there's a game. Also, I know when I was going off the uh, the money line and the spread, I, I kind of messed up a little bit. So the spread is minus one fifteen for the um, the Texans, minus one hundred five for the the Bears. The money line right now. So the Texans opened up as plus one ten. The Bears are minus 130. Now the Bears are plus 115, and uh, the Texans are minus 135. And like I said, the curtain over-under is 31. So take that how you will. Uh, make sure to tune into the game. It's on ESPN. It's on ABC, ESPN Deportes. Make sure to tune in for it. 8 p.m. Eastern time. Looking forward to it. Football is back. It's been a long off season, like I said, but it's back. And I can't wait to watch this game tonight, even though it's not going to be the most exciting game in the world, but it's football. I'll take it. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to check out all the other shows. And, uh, yeah, that is all the time that we have for today. Appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, we'll be back again tomorrow, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And until then, I'm Kenneth Grunfelder signing off from the GSMC Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Have a good day, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Take care.